Something is happening in Chernobyl, and scientists are witnessing one of the most bizarre and rapid series of mutations in history. This information comes after studies revealed how dogs who were abandoned during the evacuation following the nuclear meltdown can survive in a place where no one thought life could survive, let alone thrive. Yup, you heard that right. I know most of you imagined a desolate ghost town, but surprisingly, many dogs and other animals have claimed the exclusion zones as their territory. Not to mention how dogs who survived the infamous nuclear disaster in the country are doing something no one imagined, and this canine population must be watched closely and regularly tested to finally get answers to questions that have been going on for years. How can these dogs survive in the radioactive environment, and what else can they do? Let's find out. First, let's talk about the Chernobyl disaster. One of the biggest nuclear catastrophes in history occurred with the events that took place at the Chernobyl power station in 1986 caused irreparable damage to the country. And believe it or not, radioactive substances that were discharged into the atmosphere are still lingering in the area near the power plant. How bad was it? Well, approximately 350,000 individuals fled during the incident, abandoning their lives and possessions in the process. Pets, which evacuees were prohibited from retrieving, are among the aspects of the inhabitants' lives that were left behind, yet sadly are sometimes overlooked. Many of these species survived the high radiation levels in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, and now their progeny can still be found in and around the area. This was because most of the animals were considered non-essential, and the owners were left with no choice but to leave them. During the evacuation, buses were filled to bring residents as far away as possible from the Chernobyl power plant. They were only told to carry the absolute essentials and leave everything else, with the promise that they would be riding the same bus back home after two days or so. Sadly, no one ever made it back. In the end, the animals were left to fend for themselves because they were considered non-essential during the evacuation. This is why, on top of the people who instantly died during the explosion, reports mentioned that thousands of livestock animals and house pets also died as a result. Surprisingly, dogs were able not only to survive, but thrive. This was even as radioactive substances spread across the affected zones day in and day out. We all know that any wilderness is harsh, but one with so much radioactive toxins floating in the air is the worst. But despite all of this, the dogs of Chernobyl live as if nothing is wrong. With limited resources, scarce food, and a harsh environment, scientists were baffled to find a huge population of these pups roaming around the forest and places near the plants, almost as if the disaster never happened. But as the years went by, the large number of dogs began to worry scientists. Through inbreeding, Chernobyl dogs were able to create a breed of their own with very distinct genes, most of them still carrying radioactive substances from the tip of their noses to their wagging tails. And this alarmed researchers because, while other animals, even humans, instantly succumbed to the harsh environment around the area, these canines weren't even bothered, making them think. Did the incident successfully create a mutant dog? We've all heard that only cockroaches will survive the nuclear wars, but maybe the cockroaches will have some company. After the Chernobyl nuclear incident, places near the plant were deserted and deemed too dangerous to be called home again. However, the house pets that were left behind made this horrendous place into some sort of sanctuary. Many of them are seen roaming around, running and playing with each other like it's a normal day. Unlike popular belief, Chernobyl dogs look pretty normal. At most, you might even say they are beautiful breeds of dogs. They don't have five eyes or two heads just like what a mutant dog might look like, but still, you can't let their puppy eyes fool you. Despite looking normal, these dogs have been proven to be everything but that. Because of their incredible survival, scientists are now gaining insight into how long-term nuclear exposure has impacted this group of wild dogs that live close to the Chernobyl exclusion zone. A study published in Science Advances suggests that the radiation exposure that is still present in Chernobyl may have profoundly changed the genetic makeup of the dog populations. The most impactful result of the study is the possibility that radiation was able to speed up the dog's natural evolution. As crazy as this sounds, 
sounds, this may not be the most bizarre story. For many years, researchers have studied various animals and organisms inhabiting the Chernobyl Exclusion Zones, or CEZ. This includes bacteria, rats, and even birds. As a result of radiation, an organism that doesn't die will have a different appearance than usual. For example, eastern tree frogs, which are typically green in color, were more frequently discovered to be black in the CEZ. This is due to melanin pigments, which are responsible for skin color, have undergone a favorable mutation for the dogs, which may have helped ionize the radiation in their environment. This made scientists wonder if the same thing happened to the Chernobyl dogs. According to this recent study, stray dogs residing close to the Chernobyl power plant displayed clear genetic differences from canines living only a few miles away in the city. Even though it may appear like a strong indication that these canines have undergone a quick mutation or evolution, researchers emphasize that this study is simply the beginning of establishing that theory. To shed more light and find more data, more studies were conducted. When researchers first stepped into the CEZ, they discovered that there are three distinct dog populations in these regions. One that resides near Chernobyl City, about 15 kilometers from the power plant, another that resides in the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Area, or CNPP, and a third that resides in Slavutic, a city with relatively less contamination since it's at 45 kilometers from the heart of the disaster. Using blood samples from more than 300 dogs, the group was able to find more answers. According to the researchers, many of the effects that have been identified in dogs and other animals are similar to those that have been documented in the past with atomic bomb survivors from Japan during World War II. For instance, they recorded that they have higher rates of cataracts and are more likely to develop abnormalities such as tumors, a smaller brain, and changes in their physical symmetry. However, despite repeated efforts to finally solve this mysterious case, researchers revealed that they're still far from the end goal of determining whether radiation affected the dog's mutation. The study revealed that there are significant genetic changes inside and between geographical regions of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, but this only suggests that the dogs are mobile and can breed freely. But researchers are not giving up. After this discovery, they are now prepared to map the genetic development of dogs over the last few generations and examine how they have persisted and multiplied throughout the time since the explosion. The results from all these efforts were able to demonstrate proof of a distinct genetic difference by comparing the DNA of the three groups of dogs in the areas to DNA from populations of dogs elsewhere in the world. The scientists also discovered indications of kinship and relatedness between these populations, as well as the existence of three distinct family groups. In addition, while dogs in the CNPP population had more in common with shepherd breeds than with pincher related breeds, dogs in the Chernobyl city region shared equal DNA with each breed. This is in contrast to wolf populations in the wild, which organize into family groups with distinct territories. Wolves avoid interbreeding because of the strict hierarchy within the pack. Not to mention how territorial wolves are, and most of the time, they tend to be very possessive of their mates. In contrast, studies suggest that dogs left in the area after the Chernobyl disaster did not have a hierarchical system and would go about their lives without the fear of getting kicked out of the pack. As a result, these dogs would mate with any dogs they came across in the wild, free from restrictions a pack of wolves often follows. So, is there a mutant dog? The answer is no. While long-term radiation exposure indeed affected the dog's DNA, they are fairly normal. As mentioned above, no three-headed dogs like Fluffy from Harry Potter or Glowing Eyes either, just a normal set of paws, fluffy fur, and a wacky tail. A lot of them are very friendly to the few visitors that will visit them. However, it is still advised to play with them carefully. This is because just like any dog, most of them will roll on the ground, eat just about anything they see, and live in a place where radioactive substances Instances are very much present. Due to this, Chernobyl dogs carry radiation wherever they go. However, despite all of the difficulties they faced, Chernobyl dogs are undeniably survivors, proving that animals can withstand such harsh environments. As to why, scientists are still looking for a concrete answer to finally explain and maybe uncover the possibility of really creating a true mutant dog in the future. Do you think mutant dogs really exist? Let us know in the comment section below and give this a like and subscribe for more.